Hey yo everyone, thank you for watching, and as I know it's not the 20th, and I know it's a lot later into the year, I am showing you, I am finally bringing you guys the first ever Pokemon Cage match between me and a Mr. Beansy, and for this awesome moment, I want to tell you guys a few things. One, this is not the only one. We are actually, me and Beansy are considering doing a random match after this and hang out till the end of the video because I will have down when me and Beansy will actually be doing a podcast talking about our training styles and what we did leading up to the match. Now, without further ado, the rules and the team. Okay, and the rules for the match is... Rule number one, all Pokemon must start at levels one to five. No bringing of all Pokemon onto your team, which meant that you could not, say, go out and, before your team even started, at the beginning of the game, you could not have, uh, like, a level 53 Steelix on your team. Plus, this is not in the rule that me and BNC just agreed to this. We were allowed to go and we had to start from the beginning all the way to the end of the game, which is beating all the gym leaders, completing the story of Yveltal, and completing and beating the Elite Four. Rule number two, if you want to evolve a Pokemon through trade, such as Machoke or Kadabra, you must evolve them in the next town on your route. If you are in a town, you must immediately evolve it. Meaning like this, if you say you are in a cave and your Abra turns into a Kadabra, you must immediately, uh, when you get to the next town, evolve it. I know you can just do it right then and there, but I wanted to make things a little easier when you, had, when you got to the next town and you didn't have to worry about it immediately fainting. Rule number three, no extra legendary Pokemon. No Zapdos, Articuno, Mew... Uh, Arceus, etc. from other games. Technically, I did leave a loophole here because you can get the legendary birds, but they're a bitch to get. Also, Mewtwo. I left him out. He is not on my team, though. So, special rules, though. Me and Beansy before everything, I know I said it in the... I think I said it in the announcement that me and Beansy were considering uh, doing a little twist to it. So here's our twist. We each chose a Pokemon on the opposing person's team. Me, I want to be nice. Uh, Eevee must have an Eevee on his team and can evolve it into any of the evolutions. I must have a Combi. I did not write it here on the battle rules, but I must have a Combi, male or female, on his team and have it evolve. It can evolve, which mine did. So... Those are the rules. The only other rule was you had to level them up cherry. You couldn't say go and grind on a different game and then bring them back. No, that's not how it works. So, that's the rules. Let's get on to the next portion, which is the actual teams. Okay, everyone, and now the teams of both Nightshader and Beansy. As you can see right here on the screen, me and Beansy have both compiled good teams, and we also have followed the rules. Me, I have the great Chestnut, also known as Spike, Charizard, known as Fang, Gengar, left as Gengar. I have, I can't pronounce its name, Electros, I believe it is. His name is Little Blastard. And I don't know what Beansy named his team. I'm just telling you mine. Uh, Hexios, which is known as Blades because of what's on his face. And Queen. I can't pronounce her name. All Pokemon in this are over the level of 70. Beansy's as well. Who has Charizard, Greninja, Electros, Sylveon, following the rule of he has to have an Eevee, Venusaur, and Agron. As you can see... Beansy has a type advantage here. He has a water type that can easily take down my Charizard, but my Charizard can easily take down his Venusaur. His Sylveon is my main problem because the fairy type in X and Y are actually super hard to take down because dragon type moves like my Hexios can't take it down. But everything in all, my one trump card is Little Purple Bastard. Yep, Gengar is my ace in the hole because of two things you'll hear. You will not see. You will hear what is going on. So, 
without further ado, let us continue on to what what our contestants are playing for. Okay, and last but not least, what we are actually battling for. Me and Beansy are actually going to be going head-to-head -head in this to get the other person's Yvettel. If you remember, if you've ever played X and Y, Yvettel is the Pokemon that symbolizes the letter Y and is the death Pokemon. When it reaches the end of its life, it consumes all the life around it and then it goes into a slumber. That is all you need to know right now until we actually get into the battle next. But please remember, this is going to be a very, very tense battle. And I will not be able to upload the videos because I actually don't know how to take the video and put them up onto the internet. I might figure it out before the battle, so you might be able to see it. So, without further ado, let's get into the battle! Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, welcome to the first ever Nightshader vs. Beansy Pokemon Cage Match in Pokemon X and Y. Brought to you by your local Pokemon Center and by your local Nurse Joy and Police Department. We bring you into here, after seeing the teams, we now know what each person is hitting with. So, Pokemon list. We all have our lists. We are actually doing a double battle in the Coliseum. And we are all we are both sticking to a generalized fifth level 50 Pokemon because a Mr. Beansy kind of screwed up when I thought they were all at level 70. So, we are going in hardcore, my friends. So, yes. And we both have followed the rules to the T for this. So, without further ado, let's get ready to rumble! And Beansy now walks into the field. His first two Pokemon are, si are Charizard and Venusaur. Wow, Nightshader throws out his own Charizard and a Hexorus. They square off against each other. And. Both competitors look like they have been really training their Pokemon. Beansy is still choosing his moves. While Nightshader's moves are locked in. Remember kids, this is only the first. This is the first round. Oh, Cinder of Beansy's team uses Heat Wave, which causes very little effect to Fang or to Hexorus. Hexorus uses Surf, which is devastating to Charizard of Beansy's side, but very little to his uh, Venusaur. Venusaur charges up for a nice little uh, Solar Beam, and we're choosing the next round of moves. Beansy activates his Pokemon, his Charizard, Charizardite Y, and Mega evolves Charizard into Mega Charizard, creating the Drought, which increases Fire type, and Cinder flies high, aka his Charizard. Charizard on Beansy's side, on Hayden's side, or Nightshare's side, hits the Venusaur. And Venusaur uses Solar Beam after a uh, Hexorus is unable to attack. Alright. We are into the next moves. And there, we're going to do that. Okay, and the moves for the third round are going off. And now... Uh... Nightshader is turning his Charizard into Mega Charizard using the Y stone. Cinder uses Fly and he takes out Hexorus. And Hexorus is down. Yet, well, Nightshader's Charizard takes out Venusaur with a flamethrower. The next team will be. Alright, and Nightshader sends out his Electros. 
along with Beansy sending out his Electros. Both teams are equally matched. And... Bro and the... <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> And the teams are ready for the next round. And both Charizards fly into the air. Yet, I am the only one using Power Up Punch against his Electros with my Electros. The next, pu the next round comes up. Cinder misses Charizard. And both miss. Electros on Beansy's side uses Crunch, which is a critical hit. And Electros on Nightshader's side uses another power up punch, which is increasing his attack stat every punch. We go into the next round of attacks. And <laughs> both Charizards fly into the air again. This is becoming a very powerful match, and his elect and Beansy's Electros is continuously missing its hits again. Charizard and Drought is now ended on the field, so Fire type moves are no longer enhanced. Charizard on Beansy's side attacks Electros, bringing his health down, but. Not as much as what... Ooh, we are almost to the end of Cinder, Mr. Uh, Beansy's Charizard. And his Electros using Rock Smash is very well used. But Electros on Nightshader's side using an R Power Up Punch, five in a row. Boosting his attack speed, his attack is then fainted. Beansy is sending out his next Pokemon, and it will be a Sylvie, a Sylveon, a fairy type, which is a dangerous combination against these two. All right, and what are we doing here now, kids? Waiting for Beansy. Oop. Charizard on the opposite side is using Heat Wave, which misses... Electros, but Charizard is hit. Charizard on Nightshare side takes flight, and Draining Kiss is used on Electros, and he is fainted. Okay, what can I use? All right, all right. Next on the field is Gengar, who is a very strong opponent indeed, even against a fairy type. Fairy types have a small advantage over dark, however, so he will ha Knight will have to use Gengar correctly. All right, we are waiting on Beansy now. Yep, we are just waiting. Oh, here we go. Cinder used Fly, a.k.a. Beansy's Charizard. I'm going to just go... And Gengar uses an attack which misses... Beansy is in my ear at the moment, kids, and he is saying, just, just leave it and use their names. Gengar is hit with Moonblast, which actually is not very effective. I thought it would be more effective. And we continue on with the next fight. Cinder uses Fly and Pile Drives right into Gengar, who uses Hypnosis on Sylvie. Sylvie falls into a deep sleep. And now Charizard on Nightshader's side uses Cut, ending the reign of Beansy's Charizard known as Cinder. Sylvie yet is fast asleep. Oh shit. <laughs> and we continue on into the next round. And his, after sending out his lovely dark type. Oh, I see what he wants to do. His, uh, Greninja takes out the lovely, the powerful Gengar, who he was actually targeting. Knowing that Gengar would easily be able to take him out. 
Next on the field is Chestnut, who is no named Spike. But f sad thing is, he forgets one bad thing about transforming his Greninja into a dark type using its ability, which is able to switch. That now he is weak against dark type moves, which is one of Spike's very, very good moves. A Pokemon who now knows dark moves and grass type is a very dangerous combination for this Pokemon. Oh, and yet he uses a type of move that is very effective towards, yeah, towards his Pokemon. Oh, and we attack it, and we have now attacked Charizard pile driving into Greninja, and Greninja is now under siege and has now fainted thanks to the dual combination of both Charizard and Chestnut. And Spiked also uses his leftovers, which he has been ha having to hang on to since the very beginning when Nightshader found it. Both teams are doing exceptionally well. Both poke both trainers are putting their Pokemon through their paces. But only one will be able to really be victorious through this whole ordeal. Fang you Fang uses Fire Flame Blast and hits Argon, who was just recently sent out. And Sylvie finally wakes up to do a draining kiss on Spike, finishing off this powerful Pokemon for very little gain. Agron uses Dragon Tail against Charizard. Sadly, Charizard is then swept off the field and Queen is brought out who exer exerts pressure. But what Beansy forgets is Queen is my last Pokemon, so Fang is coming back out. He has royally screwed up because now Fang's drought, sunny day kind of thing reunites itself. Every time you take your Charizard, who is a Mega Evolved, is sent in and out, you can actually restart the drought, making his fire attacks twice as strong. Fang uses fl Flame Blast, and he decimates the Agron. Sylvie, now only at half health, is left. And Sylvie uses Draining Kiss on Charizard, only draining so much of its life. And bringing itself back up into the green, Queen uses Venishock. And hits Sylvie, which is super effective. Now at the last part of their po of this battle, both teams are down to two and one Pokemon. This has been a very close battle, but it looks like it's about to all end here, folks. Fang uses his famous Flame Blast and ends Sylvie, thus ending the first round. Thank you for watching the first round. This was an incredibly close first round and we will be back with you in just a second a word from our sponsors welcome ladies and gentlemen to round two. First round is won by nightshader he is one step closing closer to winning his yveltal and sooner or later winning the great belt we start up round two the way the first one started both teams are choosing their Pokemon. They might want to change it up in this round just because, hey, who knows what's going to be coming out first and what's coming out last. Last uh, last uh, round, we saw Fang, Garrett's, I mean, Nightshader's Charizard, really stay in there and really work the crowd and sooner or later help decimate everything. Beansy, on the other hand, was very good with his Charizard and his other supporting Pokemon. His Greninja threw Nightshader a curveball by being able to transform to every type of his move. And now we are into the second round where he sends out his Electros and his Greninja. Greninja is standing there looking at Gengar and Electros as well. Of course, what he does not know is that both teams are ready for this. 
Night. I mean, Beansy turn uses his ability to turn his Greninja into a Dark type and uses Dark Pulse to end Gengar. And his Electros uses Crunch on Electro on. Electros, but Electros on Nightshare's side uses that same crunch against a great and powerful uh, Greninja, who also is holding leftovers. And Nightshader sends out Hexorus in replace of Gengar. And we get into the next round and the next part of this fight. Both teams look like they have been battling for a long time. As we wait for BNC to initiate his moves. Nightshader withdraw I mean Beansy withdraws his own massacre or also known as Electros. And Electros is then Replaced with Sylvie, his Sylveon, using a psychic move from his lovely Greninja. Greninja is able to uh, use explanatory, a psychic attack that actually affects uh, Electros on Nightshare's side. And we go in and we replace Hexorus with a different Pokemon. And we bring out Charizard. Greninja uses uh, Exorary again and ends. And ends Electros. You, and leaving Sylveon to use Dazzling Beam against Charizard, which is not very effective. We are into the thick of this, and Beansy is actually doing very well this round. Okay, and we turn go into the next part of this round. With Beansy withdrawing Sylvie, and him replacing him with Cinder. Nightshader uses his Y Mega Stone to Mega Evolve his Charizard. And creating Drought. And you're turning his Greninja into a Water type with its special edition and using Waterfall to really affect his, Chariz his Charizard. Nightshade's Charizard uses Flamethrower, which is really non effective to his own Charizard. However, Nightshade's uh, Chestnut, also known as Spike, takes out his Greninja with a single Seed Bomb. Both both teams are both teams are really working hard to get over, uh, edge of the other team. Beansy is pondering what to do with his next, and he sends out his Agron. Knowing that in the next round, Pokemon are going to become very scarce indeed. But Nightshare throws a curveball. We wait for the attack round to come up for Nightshare to show it. As he re <laughs> withdraws Spiked, also known as Chestnut, to replace him with Hexorus, a fire-resistant Pokemon. As he Mega Evolves his Agron into a higher defense Agron. And Cinder uses Fly. Charizard on Nightshare 5 uses Flamethrower against Agron, which decimates because it is super effective. Remember, as Nightshader, as... And Beansy forgets in, as he says this in Nightshader's ear, he forgets that 
yes, it cuts the super effective because Agron has filter. He forgets that even though it's super effective, if it would easily decimate two times over, cutting it in half still means you're going to die very quickly. Especially because he was already injured from the previous attack. And we go into the next round with Cinder using Fly against Charizard, knocking him out and leaving Hexorus on his own to do dual chop against Cinder, who goes down in two shots. Yet, while his Venusaur absorbs light from Solar Beam and is able to use Solar Beam in the first turn because of Drought. Yet, Drought will be gone by the end of this round. Venusaur now all by its lonesome on the... Now with Sylvie on the field as well as his backup. Beansy down the three Pokemon. Nightshader down the three Pokemon. We then go into the next part of this attack round where we are easily able to start seeing the true part of these Pokemon. Hectorus uses Dragon Pulse against Venusaur, which does very little to nothing. Venusaur uses Energy Ball against Hexorus, which brings him down to the red. Sylvie uses Dazzling Gleam against both, which ends uh, Hexorus, but brings... Our friend Spike down to only the red. While a seed bomb brings him very close to the end. We then bring out... Queen, who has a super effective attack against Sylvie. Will, will Beansy go after him, or will they focus their attack on... Or will they focus their attack on Spike, who is the main hitter of this round? We are waiting for Beansy to figure out what he's doing. And we get a solar beam up and running from his Venusaur, which will attack his qu a queen who is of who is very highly resistant against that. Dazzling Gleam knocks out Spiked and, but leaves Queen behind. What Beansy forgets is both these Pokemon are weak against bug and poison types. Sylvie goes down after a Venishock from Queen and the sunshine fades. Now if not Beansy wishes to use Solar Beam, he will have to use it in two rounds. Oh, then Beansy sends out... Beansy uses his... Beansy forgot his last Pokemon who was his Electros, an electric type which can easily take out this queen. We are actually going to need to take it to three rounds. As Venusaur uses strength, which is not very effective, and Electros uses Electroshock, which is super effective, and Beansy wins the second round against Nightshader. Now we are neck and neck. The third round and the final round will determine who is the victor of this cage match. Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the last round of this cage match. Me and Beansy have been working hard. We have both won a round and we are going back into it. What? Beansy does not know is that Nightshader is actually very surprised at how this has gone. And Beansy has agreed that this has go gone a little too far. We need, we need to get better Pokemon next time. And we have even agreed and signed a contract. <clears throat> yeah, and we even... And we even signed a contract. I have him in my ear in case if you guys uh, didn't know why I'm like stopping quick. And so you guys know we have signed the contract. We have called up the lawyers. We have drafted the papers. And we are going to be doing a random battle next time. Which will be us making random teams. Going onto a randomizer online. 
finding a team, making a team, and then making it. I will have more info at the end of the match. As we start this last match up, Beansy comes out and he sends out Sylveon and his lovely Greninja. While Nightshader sends out his Charizard and Hexorus. The two square up as we begin. Be Nightshare not wasting any time and activating his Mega Evolution for his Charizard. And Charizard enacting the drought from his Mega Evolution. And uh, Beansy is using Waterfall on said Charizard. Which brings him down to 88. It is super effective and he takes flight. Blades you Hexorus uses dual chop and chops Greninja twice. Bring him down to the red and Fang avoiding it. Sylveon uses a lovely uh, dazzling gleam. And Greninja using a lovely bit of his leftovers. Nightshader sends out his lovely spiked, a.k.a. Chestnut. Or Crescent Nut, I don't know how you pronounce it. And we continue on. We are now waiting for Beansy to enact his next round of attacks. This battle is getting very heated up. I see someone over in the corner not learning how to control the sphincter. They are losing their goddamn mind. And they are just staring into each other's soul. The Greninja. And he withdraws his Greninja. Sending out Cinder. Fang uses Fly on Sylveon, which brings him down, which uses Dazzling Gleam, which does very little to bo either both Fang and to Spike. Spike uses Hammer Arm to a enact a little bit of pressure onto Cinder, Beansy's Charizard. And we now, and we, yeah, I know. And now, he has withdrawn Sylvie and is putting out Agron, which was kind of the dumbest move he could have made right now. I'm not going to say why, as we withdraw Spike and put out Little, ba Little Blastered, also known as Electros. Cinder uses Heat Wave. Which does very little to both Charizard and to Electros. Fang, the Charizard of Mr. Nightshader, uses Flamethrower, ending Agron in one hit. He forgets that this drought and the fire are very powerful moves together. And he puts out his own Electros. As we go into the next round. Now only having Charizard, I do believe. Oh, no. Cinder is flying high. Cinder is flying high. Along with Fang flying high. And both are you. And Beansy's Electros uses uses Spark, which misses its mark on... Uh, Charizard, and a power-up punch comes from Little Blastard, and he withdraws this guy and brings out Demeanor, who is going to be sadly crushed after being hit. And Charizard, Cinder on Beansy's side, uses Fly on Electros, which does nothing, really. But Charizard on Nightshader's side on Demeanor, his Venusaur, a Flying-type move against a Grass-type is like throwing gasoline on a fire. 
and the sunlight from the drought fades and now we are at even playing field again we might be seeing the end very soon kids as he sends out we are waiting for the connection to say I just bumped my knee off a dresser it hurts as he sends out his Sylveon again And we go into the next round. He can easily be taking out Little little Blastard, also known as Electros, very easily here. Fang is in the yellow as well. Sylveon is only at half health, while Cinder on his side has only a sliver bit of his health gone, about maybe an eighth. As Beansy activates his own Charizard, Charizardite, why Mega Stone making him a Charizard, a Mega Charizard, reenacting the drought. Which was is pretty smart yet kind of bad. Cinder uses flamethrower against Charizard, which knocks it out immediately. Charizard goes down. Next is draining kiss by Sylveon, which brings Electros out of the battle. Bring them both up to the green. Now we only have. Now we only have three Pokemon left on Nightshader's side. Where he, who, which three he will choose? Only one other person will know. He sends out Queen, the type that makes his Sylveon quiver in its boots. And we also have Gengar, who makes all these guys wet their collective shitters. We look at the teams, and we now see what is going to happen. Charz Mega Charizard on Beansy side uses flame heat wave which royally decimates the teams and will easily secure the win for Beansy. Gengar puts Charizard to sleep which would be his highest and draining kiss easily and draining kiss Easily put Sylveon in control of this match, leaving only Chestnut in his orange at 44 <laughs> health in battle. This is going to be a short battle, kids, especially if he decides to do what I think he's going to do. Cinder is fast asleep. He cannot use a fire type move, which is thankful for me, but that draining kiss will easily fuck up my day. And it ends him! And Beansy now is the one, the new, and the first Pokemon champion, and winning the grand prize of having the Yveltal of Nightshare. I will join you guys in a second in the winner's booth. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, me and Beansy are now holding our DS's and Beansy is in my ear right now. We could not figure out how to get him on the audio. He says that it was a lovely match. Both teams worked hard. It was a two on it was a two on one victory. Beansy being able to knock it out with a fairy type over a dark type. Very well put. And he really did fuck me over when he said, get a combi. That was an excellent little but put for fucking over your te over your opponent. Now, as we're trading, uh, I'm Beansy's right here next to me. He's going to be working with it a little bit. We are uh, thankful that we are able to do this, and we want to thank all the Poke Centers out there that actually donated 25 cents for every Pokeball healed during our adventure. And are you fucking serious, dude? No, dude. What? Okay, I am not making this up. As you know, the winner was supposed to get the Yveltal of the other person. Beansy just traded me his fucking Yveltal. We both have one now. So, now that we both have a Yveltal, I am glad to say we are actually going to be moving into the... Uh, next match, which will be the random match. The random match will be same rules as before. You had to play through X instead of Y now. You had to play all the way through with this select team that are randomized. As you know, on the internet, you can find a Pokemon team randomizer. 
and we are going to go slot style. You roll it once, you choose the Pokemon you want, roll it twice. If you find all the Pokemon you want, you're good. But you're allowed to switch one of your Pokemon out with one Pokemon you actually want to have on your team. Say you only have fire type or grass type and you wanted something different, you choose one and replace it with one you want. I have already chosen mine. Beansy still has to choose his, and we still have to roll. So, without further ado, again, Beansy, weird choice in the trade, but thank you all the same. Ladies and gentlemen, this has been your first ever Pokemon cage match between Knight and Beansy. Thank you for watching. Don't neuter or spay your pets, and have fun playing in the dark. I'll see you guys in the next one.